Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Bringing you another time video this week. It's a Betis Nymph, a blue winged olive style pattern. And uh, it's slightly a generic pattern like I'm used to tying because you can easily change the color of the tubing and the dubbings to make different, different nymphs. This would work great as a sulfur using amber tubing. Um, definitely tied in blacks and browns. It'll look great as a generic nymph style pattern. This is uh, old school, no lead, no, no beads, no nothing. Um, I will fish this on top. Like if I'm fishing my Euro rig, I need to wait. So I'm gonna put an anchor fly on the bottom. I'll put this one off my dropper and fish it up there. Uh, but you know, you old school guys, this is your kind of pattern and uh, it looks really cool and it's easy to tie. A little bit of practice, get a couple of techniques down and you'll have it in no time. So. Have fun tying it, guys. Here you're going to see the Betis Nymph in a picture of it, and then the material is to tie it. Okay, here we have the Betis Nymph in the vise. Very cool looking pattern, not real hard to tie. And uh, I'm gonna put the hook in the vise. I'm using a 609. In this video, I'm using a size 14. Definitely tie this in like 16s and 18s, but for video quality, I'm using the 16. For thread, I'm using some Semperfly. This is eight aught wax thread in pale olive. I'm just gonna start that on and wrap it back towards the back. Next thing I'm going to take is some pheasant tail fibers and a mayfly has three but if you just put three little fibers on there it doesn't show up real well. I like it to be noticed. So I'm going to put about six on there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get them not the full length of the body that's too long. I want to go about half the length of the body a little bit further than half maybe. Just keep it proportionate. Don't make it too long. And there you can see, I like that length there. That's, I could even shorten that a hair. There, I like that better. Get that wrap down there nice and tight and then you can pull them fibers off. Next thing we're gonna use is some midge tubing. Uh, this is light olive from Hairline. And I'm just gonna place it on top. And where I'm gonna start this at is about a third of the way back, I would say. And I'm gonna tie it down, get it nice and tight, and then I'm gonna pull this tubing back to thin out that tubing as I wrap back to those tail fibers. And when I start to move those tail fibers, I know I've gone far enough and don't wanna go any further. Then we're just gonna smooth this out with my thread. Don't really build up, just smooth out. And uh, this eight aught is equivalent to like 70 denier. So next we're just gonna wind this forward. It's gonna make nice side-by-side -side wraps. It's gonna give it a little bit darker of an olive look to it, which I like. And when I get up there to that two-thirds of a waypoint, I pull that up and just wrap it off. And then we're gonna cut the stretch tube off and set it aside for my next one. All right, now, just gonna put a little bit of thread on there to, so the, it grips a little bit better. And next we're gonna use some scud back. This is the 1 8 inch size scud back in brown. And I'm gonna lay it right on top, get it kind of close there, and then wrap it down with my thread. And I want this to stay on the center. Once I get it wrapped on there, I'm gonna pull it a little bit tighter and again, go back to that two thirds of the waypoint there, just, just past halfway to the two thirds waypoint. Now that I have that out of the way, I'm gonna put on some dubbing. And I'm just, this is actually the Red Fox Squirrel Nymph dubbing blend that I made up um, in my dubbing blend video. But use any color brown flashy dubbing here. I like a lighter brown color just to give it a two-tone effect against that olive colored body. And keep it really thin because this is a small, delicate little fly. Now, next thing we're gonna do is put some legs on this. 
For the legs, I'm using a, this is a partridge feather. This is actually one of the wings. And I'm gonna take and pinch the tip of the feather and I'm gonna stroke back all the fibers like such. I'm gonna stroke those fibers all back, just have that tip there, and then I'm gonna cut that tip off. When I do that, I have a little V, and I'm gonna pull back about six fibers on each side. Gives me a little bit of a V. Those Vs are gonna become my legs. And I'm just gonna set it on top, and then I'm gonna pinch it down each side of the hook. And then I'm gonna soft loop over the top, tie them in place there where I want, make a couple wraps, and then I'm gonna pull the scud back over the top and wrap Wrap that right behind the eye there. Just making sure you don't trap the leg feathers down. Make three or four wraps, and then I'm gonna pull this scud back back and just clean up this head a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna cut these legs off, get them out of the way, and I'm gonna whip finish that head. Oops, my scud back popped up there, just a hair. So I'm just gonna pull everything back out of the way, wrap back up on that scud back, and then whip finish. That's fine, I snapped my thread off. I'm gonna put a little bit of head cement on here anyway. So that's fine. So cut my thread off. Pull my scud back tight, trim it off, and then I'm gonna come in with some bone dry. I'm gonna put the bone dry on the top of my scud back and down over my whip finish, down over my thread. And that just locks everything in there good. And that is all that's to this very cool looking little mayfly pattern. Uh, like I said, we're tying it here as a betas for a blue winged olive, tie it, in amber, you got yourself a sulfur, tied in browns, blacks, a lot of mayfly. You got that, if you look there, it's the profile of a mayfly. Roll a rock over and you're going to see that same profile and that's what's important. All right, guys, hope you liked that video. Like I was talking there at the end, I like to match the profile more than the color so much. Um, making sure that thorax is bigger than the abdomen, everything's in proportion, the tail's not too long, the, you know, the legs aren't overpowering on it. Um, just try to work on your proportions. Get everything, so, so nothing looks too big or out of whack or anything like that. Remember, nature's not like humans. I say it all the time, nature isn't like humans. There's not an obesity problem in the insect world. Humans have the obesity problem. So keep things thin. Thin as you can because it'll cut through the water. Even without weight like this, you know, for me, I'm going to fish it on my nymph rig. I'm going to fish this off my dropper. Well, I don't want that causing drag to get my anchor fly down to the bottom as quickly as I can. So this fly works just as effectively. Um, like I said, don't get that thorax too big. And... If you don't believe me on proportions here, take and lift up a rock, roll it over, like I said. Roll it over, put that fly next to a mayfly crawling around on the bottom of the rock. You're going to see the, the head part of it, or the thorax, is wider than the abdomen, the body part of it. So match that up. When I say it doesn't matter so much about color, remember that a lot of my flies, I'm putting orange and pink hot spots on. Down under the water, there's nothing that's fluorescent orange and pink. That's to catch the fish's attention. So don't concentrate so much as color as you do size and proportion. You know, getting the, the abdomen section like two thirds and the thorax one third, the tail the right length, that kind of stuff. Just make it all nice and pretty and it's gonna catch fish. Make it ugly, it's still gonna catch fish as long as it's buggy and looks good and it's not like totally huge or something like that. Um, have fun tying guys, learn and practice. You know, whenever I do one of these videos, if it's a newer pattern or something like that, I'll sit and tie for the whole morning, tie up a dozen of them or so just to get it to where I can do it. We always used to say in wrestling practice, don't practice till you get it right. 
practice till you can't get it wrong. So work at it, tie a half dozen, tie a dozen, whatever it takes until you get it all figured out where you like what, how you like the looks of it and then keep mimicking that. So have fun tying, you need any of the materials like always. Find them at our shop at wholesingersflyshop.com. If you have any questions, you can drop them down in the comments or you can shoot me an email at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I love bringing these videos to you. And uh, until next week when I bring you another one, oh, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But until then, I'm Sean Holsinger.